everybody, it's Gil with another video in the Pit Boss Pro Series Combo Pellet Smoker and Gas Grill Series. Today we're going to be making spatchcock chicken. Don't let the word bother you, it's just a simple word that essentially means cut open and flat. We'll show you how to spatchcock the chicken, how to prepare it. We'll also show you how to make a killer dry rub that's good for any kind of poultry. Real easy to do. Then we're going to go ahead and get this thing set up. We'll show you what temperature we use, how we set it up, cook it, and then ultimately we'll taste it and see how it all turns out. Hope you guys enjoy this week's video on spatchcock chicken. So first things first, let's get the grill uncovered so we can go ahead and get started. So before we get started, let's go ahead and make this dry rub. Again, this is a killer dry rub you can use on any kind of poultry you're doing. Pretty simple, no real measuring. Uh, it's, we're gonna just do it in, in sort of parts, if you will. So let's start with one part uh, coarse sea salt. I'm gonna mix up enough that I'll have more, more than I need for just this one chicken. This will last us a little bit. So I'm of course sea salt, one part. Sadly, I don't have any pre-ground peppers. This is gonna take a minute because I need to grind that much. <sighs> All right, I sped that up because certainly you don't wanna just sit and watch the all that grinding going on. So again, one part, coarse ground sea salt, one part uh, coarse ground pepper, and then we're gonna do a half part of granulated garlic. And I mentioned before, I'm, I'm not measuring this exact, I'm just sort of, you know, eyeballing it. So again, one part sea salt, one part pepper, half part of granulated garlic, then we do one third part of some kind of a seasoned salt. Some people just use um, a regular seasoned salt. Uh, around here, we really like this Tony Catchery's Creole se uh, seasoned salt. Um, the six year old loves this and she'll ask for anything with Tony's on it. I'll have chicken with Tony's, I'll have this with Tony's, I'll have rice with Tony's. Uh, so we'll be using this. I've also done this with a, uh, a jerk powder. So it gives it a good Caribbean or Jamaican feel. Again, one third part of this. And then the last ingredient is going to be one third part of smoked paprika. That's it, it's that simple. Take a little fork or your fingers or whatever it is, mix this up real good, and we're gonna put this in something to sprinkle it over the top of our poultry. I know a lot of people will say they like to use a fruit wood like apple wood when they're actually smoking poultry. I actually really like this competition blend. This is the stuff you can find at your local hardware store or Walmart or even grocery stores that sell supplies for pellet grills. So it's readily available and it's a great mixture. I'm going to go ahead and load up my hopper because I ran a little low last time I did some cooking out here. Let's get that loaded up. I've got it filled up almost to the grate. Um, I usually use this when I'm cooking a lot of different meats. I like to use mesquite when I'm doing brisket, but I don't intend to do any briskets anytime soon. And I am going to be cooking this at a, typically a higher um, temperature than you would normally smoke something. When you're normally smoking something at like 180, I'm going to be doing this at about 350 to 375 degrees. So I'm going to set it to 350. It tends to run a little bit hotter, especially down here in South Florida where the sun's out and um, you know, heck, it's probably, you know, this is not, not hot to the touch, but it's got some heat to it already, and it's not even on. So easy peasy for turning this thing on. First thing you do is hit the power button. It'll glow blue, which is hard to see. And then we're going to turn it on to smoke. We hear the fan kick on. And I'm just going to go ahead and let that start smoking. Once it starts smoking, then I'll go ahead and turn the temperature up. All right, it looks like we had some nice smoke going. I'm now gonna go ahead and turn this thing up to 350 degrees. All right, we're at 350. My sear plate's closed. My secondary control going into that, um, that box over there is also closed. Okay, so let's spatchcock this chicken. And again, I have this whole chicken. All we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over. We need the legs up, right? We're gonna flip it over so the tail is essentially sticking up at us. And then we're just gonna go ahead and cut it. We wanna use some poultry shears. Um, I actually, you know, I like these, right? They have, they're good scissors. They've got a serrated edge on them. It's still a little tough to do, but we'll go ahead and do it. You just wanna grab the, the sort of, it's easier to start at the neck, actually. So grab the neck right here, and we just want to cut right along that backbone. And again, it's going to be a little tough. You're cutting through bone. So we're going to cut up one side and right down the other. And it's going to get tough when you get toward this uh, back side here because you're actually cutting right through that big part of the carcass. But not too bad. So same thing here. I'm just going to cut right along that backbone. 
I'm doing like a kid does when they color, my tongue's sticking out. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna take this out and you can save that for some stock or whatever. We're just gonna move that aside. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna open this up a little bit. Now I've got the neck portion toward me, the drumsticks are away. And what we wanna do is find right in here, there's a piece of cartilage. So what we're gonna do is take your knife and you wanna feel this cartilage right here where the, where the breastbone is. And we're just gonna score that a little bit, right like this. And the idea is we want this to be able to lay out flat. That's it. Uh, it just did it. So all we want to do is score that cartilage. We don't need to get this bone right there. But that now gives us our nice flat spatchcock chicken. We'll tuck these wings under and you know, just crisscross applesauce, right? Like the kids say in school. And there we go. We now have a chicken that lays flat and will be really good when we actually grill that. The nice thing is when it's flat like this, it's not a big deal of checking the temperature in all the different spots. It tends to cook a lot more even this way. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and season our chicken with the dry rub we just made. Um, we get these little glass jars for using, uh, putting seasonings in. They work great because they have a sprinkle top on them. Sometimes you have to sort of open up the little pour tab because we're gonna put on more than what, you know, sprinkling salt or pepper on your average meal. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna go ahead and season this. So let's go ahead and turn it over so we get to the inside of the bird first. Uh, it helps to pat them dry a little bit if they're wet, but this one's not too bad. Uh, we use these little seasoning bottles for putting spices in at home. It's nice, it lets you shake them up real easy, and it has a, uh, a sprinkle top on it, so you can actually just sprinkle this stuff right down onto your actual uh, meat. So I'm just gonna coat this with a nice layer all the way across the inside of this bird. Make sure you get those drumsticks. I'm gonna get them all up here on the wings, even into this neck cavity a little bit. All right, that looks good. We'll just go ahead and pat this a little bit. So now we're gonna go flip it over and we're gonna do the same on the other side. Um, and I'll give you a couple little tricks to kick this thing up a whole nother notch after that. So let's uh, flip this guy over and sprinkle it on it again. This time on the skin side. So because this next step is gonna be messy, I'm gonna start with a, a little bit out of order. I took a piece of tin foil, folded it in half, and just made it a little bit more rigid. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of lemon or some kind of citrus, it could be orange, lime, whatever it is, slice it up, and I'm gonna put it down on that foil. And when we cook the chicken, we're gonna set it right on top of that, uh, that, that citrus. Um, this is actually a lemon we got off of our lemon tree. It's looking a little rough, so let's see how this looks beforehand. If not, I'll use the orange we have here too. Now I'm cutting them pretty thick. Uh, this is just to get some aromatics into the chicken while it's cooking. All right, here's how we can really make this thing kicked up a whole nother notch. If you take a little bit of softened butter and just add some uh, herbs and seasoning to it, I went ahead and put garlic and a little bit of um, basil and oregano in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, before I mix this up, we're gonna lift this skin up a little bit and just sort of free it up from the bird so we can rub this on the inside here. There we go. Got a couple of openings to do that. I'm just gonna mix this up with my hand, which is why I did this in the reverse order. As I mentioned, this is this can be a little bit messy, but this butter will just melt down in there and cook all down inside of that bird with the seasonings in it, a little bit of garlic, good stuff. It's essentially a compound butter is what you're making. I'm just rubbing that all down here on that, on that meat inside below the skin. It's kind of nice. You can just push it from the outside here, too. Cover that back up. Got a little bit more here. Let's see if we can get some down here underneath these thighs. There we go. Some in there. Some in here. The rest of it will just kind of rub up on the top of this guy. Give it some beautiful color. Now by doing that, I've rubbed a little bit of the uh, seasoning off, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit more on there where I decided to add that compound butter. All right, let's go get this put out on the grill. All right, we've got our chicken and our citrus with herbs, so let's get this on the grill. All right, as I mentioned before, we have the grill at 350, it is sitting right at 350 degrees. So I had that cut up citrus. I went ahead and threw a little bit of thyme and some dill just because that's what we had in the house. We'll just go ahead and put this right on the middle of the smoker. 
And now we're just going to lay our chicken down just like this. We want the uh, skin side to be up, and we're going to set it right inside of here. Now, because the breast side is a little thicker, I'm going to put that on the left side of the grill, which tends to be the hotter side of the grill. We want to make sure it's sitting completely open like that, sitting right up on top of our citrus. And we're all set. Let's get this closed up. So at about 375 degrees, I want this to go for about 45 minutes or so. I want it to go until the um, breast temperature is about 165 degrees or so. Um, this is running a little bit cooler than I thought. I sort of expected with the sun that 350 would get up a little higher and it'd run a little hotter. It's not. So this might go a little bit more than 45 minutes, but I think we're going to be just fine. With the citrus below it and all that uh, compound butter in the skin, it'll remain moist the whole way through. So let's go ahead and set a timer and we'll be back in a bit. I went ahead and cleaned off my cutting board and brought me out a little probe thermometer. It's showing 167 degrees right now on the probe that's built into the grill. I'm just going to go ahead and use a manual one just to make sure we're still good. So I'm just putting this into a thick part of the thigh real quick. Let's see what we've got going on there. We also went ahead and put some Brussels sprouts, just wrapped them in some foil, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, wrapped them in a foil pouch and threw them over there uh, and let them go for about 30 minutes. I'm just gonna pick this up with the uh, foil and all, put it right down here on my cutting board. Let's just see how our Brussels are looking. Would have been better if I'd have brought a uh, pair of tongs or a This would have been a lot better if I'd have brought a pair of tongs or some uh, pot holders. Let's just poke these. Oh yeah, these brussels are nice and soft as well. So before we go ahead and take this all inside, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, rub this down real quick with our scrubber. Get the heavy stuff off of here. Get this thing inside and check it out. Oh, I'll tell you, it's looking good. Let me just put the Brussels sprouts over here. Take a look at that. So we'll go ahead and see if we can get it lifted up off of our citrus here. A lot easier to do here than it was sitting on that hot grill. Oh, you can just smell the orange and lemon and thyme. It smells really good. All right, let me go put these inside and I'll get a bowl. We'll put up the Brussels into the bowl and we'll get a little of this uh, chicken sliced up and let you try it out. All right, let's start with these Brussels. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them right in this little, uh, uh, whatever the heck this is, a little Tupperware looking thing. That way if we don't eat them all, they will just go in the fridge this way. Simple olive oil, salt, and pepper, and they're good. A little bit crispy on the outside. Hmm. Great charred flavor from the grill. A little bit dark on one side, not so much on the other. Look at a little one. Yeah, those are really good. Somebody's ready for chicken, but I'm about to kick her out so I can cut this real quick, and then you can eat it. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut a small piece off of the breast on this um, because. I want to try it, and Chaz says she's hungry. And then we're going to go up and slice it. We're going to eat dinner as a family, but let's get a shot of this first. Just take a look at how this slices. Look at that. Tender and juicy. If you push, you can see a little bit of the moisture on it. That looks good. Chaz, you want to try a bite, hun? Yes. Yeah, this is nice and moist. Let's see. Try the skin. It fell off. Can I see one other piece? Yeah, I got to cut it for you. You like it with the skin? You want this piece right here I just cut? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna get this cut up for us for dinner. So if you wanna know an easy way to do uh, chicken, if you just do this, you feel right where the joint is here, 
you should be able to take your knife and just go right along that joint. Not easy when it's hot, but feeling where that joint is. And you just wanna work the knife right between that joint. And there you have your wing. Now the other thing to do is if you're doing the thighs here, we just wanna score this too, same sort of thing. You wanna see exactly where that piece breaks off. And when you spatchcock it, when you spatchcock a chicken, you can see just how easily those come apart. <laughs> By the way, the origin of spatchcock is an old term called release the cock, which ironically enough means splitting the chicken open. Good thing we call it spatchcock and not releasing the cock. And now it's just a matter of cutting the breast out of here. And the nice thing is because we already split that breastbone before, we have two beautiful breasts just like this. It's juicy, huh? It was literally like pouring out the sides. You want another slice real quick? Please. Two legs, two thighs, two wings, and two nice chicken breasts. There we go.